Um, next one up, we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit about funding. So um, we're really excited to have Carl here. So actually, Carl was, when yesterday I introduced Sonia and I said that we met in a room next to a squash court at one of the first longevity conferences, like maybe seven years ago or something. Um, uh, Carl, you were also at that one, I think, like... 2018. 20, oh, it was 2018. Okay, so uh, one after. Well, uh, you were in it from the really, really early beginnings and you've created a fantastic resource for the entire ecosystem to learn from, agingbiotech.info, and you're supporting and really just like, kind of like drilling down on various different projects and like trying to really, how, how can we support the entire longevity ecosystem? So thanks a lot for your services. It's definitely much more than investing and we're excited to hear more. Um, <clears throat> how many minutes should I do for, about, uh, for including Q&A? Uh, I would say five, five, if okay. you want. <clears throat> All right, so, <clears throat> so this is gonna be fast, but um, the, uh, I'm just going to throw up some slides. Uh, I threw this together really fast from old talks, um, but you can find all the slides at that tiny URL. Um, so if you want to look at any of the ones that I'm going to go super fast snap over, uh, you can just see them there. Um, so my two main roles are uh, that I run this website, agingbiotech.info, that I'm going to tell you about, and that I'm an investor in the biotech startups in the field. Uh, I sort of represent the conventional view, um, I guess, uh, here. So. Um, with high level, if you split the world into what we can do now with lifestyle and clinical medicine that's currently available and what's coming in biotech or even earlier in academia that hasn't yet moved to biotech, I work in that second world, both the website and um, my investing. And But I do have a, a big care about having to talk offline after this talk about any of the lifestyle optimization stuff. Um, so uh, this is why you should pay attention to me because I'm one of the more active investors in, in the space, but I'm not going to concentrate on that. So agingbiotech.info, uh, just anybody who doesn't know about it should. It is a website that basically tracks what's going on in the aging and longevity field. Everything important in the field, I, the mission of the, of the site is now to link to everything important in the field that's outside of academia. Academia is a little too intractable, but everything that's going to help millions of people will eventually go through a company. And so it tracks all the companies, but it also tracks all the nonprofit foundations, uh, all the advocacy nonprofits and charities. Um, lots of lists, over 20, 19 or 20 different lists. The people's list is new. And there's also a list of currently available therapeutics, which is also relatively new. And I'm currently in the process of overhauling um, this list, which is the list of uh, all the biotech startups in the aging and longevity sector. Um, it's a huge list, I'll tell you, uh, you should just look at it. Basically, it has it's sortable and restrictable. A lot of people don't realize that, so you can sort it by whatever column you want. Uh, and right now, I'm in the midst of a giant overhaul uh, because some of this is slightly out of date. But it's still, despite being out of date, I think the largest um, narrowly focused list of aging companies in the sector um, on the internet. Uh, Nathan, of course, has a great uh, list, but he doesn't cover diagnostics, and I, I'm not sure that he's been updating it lately. Um, of course, I haven't either, but now I'm in the midst of the giant overhaul of the commercial list. Okay, so the important philosophy is it's all public info. Uh, you can read those offline. Um, and the scope is basically the, the stuff that really hits core aging pathways that, you know, is going to help with multiple diseases, um, kind of geroscience hypothesis. Um, at the moment, cryo is out of scope. Uh, we can talk more about that. Um, anyway, there's lots of good stuff going on in the field. You should check it out. Each one of the companies has a blurb of, like, you know, 10 to 20 words that kind of gives a quick summary. Even I don't know what a lot of them do, and it's really cool. Um, just a one minute high level on the space, right? What we have now and what's coming. In the what's coming, it divides into diagnostic and therapeutic, as everybody does. Uh, and then I'd say about two thirds of the space is mostly slow aging approaches, and about a third is rejuvenation. And of course, now there's cryo and replacement. Um, some replacement counts as rejuvenation, and some is, is sort of out of scope for this site. Um, and that's it. So let me just also say that this site can let you uh, look at growth. And so um, these are old slides. This is growth as of 2023. But you can see that over the past several years, the number of employees working in the sector, the number of companies, the total amount of funding to all the companies to the extent to which it's known, because some companies don't tell you, and the progress along clinical trials are all kind of going in the direction you want for a, a field that's exploding. Uh, my favorite humorous version of, of the growth of the field is just count the companies that have 
age or juve or longev in the name, and that is quite up and to the right. And it also shows you that people aren't very original in their naming. Um, there's also another quirky uh, field growth metric, which is the number of companies that have name collisions, both within the field or with companies that are outside of the field. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing. You know, there's all kinds of cyclos, and uh, you know, there's like five Gordians. Um, anyway, uh, okay. So I also invest. I can do things like tell you about what I care about when investing. We could just do that in Q and A if people are interested. Um, and then I have a whole set of slides on you know, lifestyle stuff, which we will not go into. So now Q&A. Great. Yeah, thanks a lot. Ask your questions away about um, personal longevity, investing, agingbiotech.info. So it feels kind of weird to ask this question, but uh, what do you care about when investing? Uh, so, I mean, roughly speaking, a lot of people say the team is the most important, and if you do the, do the right team, especially in tech, they say this, then they'll, they'll pivot to something if the original idea doesn't work. And that works to a certain extent in biotech, but I'm definitely less of a team emphasis investor than some, and I invest primarily based on um, mechanism of action. So I have certain things that I want, um, certain rejuvenation, damage repair type stuff is my is my emphasis. And so I primarily judge based on the science to the extent to which I can figure it out and what the mechanism of action is. You know, and then there's all these things like the why now. And so the solid lines are the things I care more about and the dashed lines I care a little less about. And I'm not that big on IP and moat because I think the right team will just run fast and get acquired by the competitors who don't want to race with them. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Um, okay, lots of them. After How did I do on keeping the talk slides um, to five I will minutes? keep you on time. Don't worry. So, I imagine investing in anti-aging is different than investing in tech, first of all, but also in some biotech, you know, because it's a, I would say, evolving field. And sometimes, especially for the rejuvenative companies, you expect to have a product in, I don't know, 50 years. So why an investor should invest in a company that has such a light long term, and again, people are going to hate me because probably everyone will want to do aging, but I'm just curious, what, what, what are the criteria that an investor like take into account when he's investing in such a high risk field that so, is so like anti-aging, so, if so, that makes sense? So, bio, so all, all early stage investing is, is, is risky, right? The fundamental equation is you have this low chance of success times multiplied by a big pot of gold. And you know, it, when you multiply a really tiny percentage times a really big number, the problem is it's hard to estimate whether you're above zero or above one or or or, or near zero. Um, that's the sort of basic startup investing formula. In biotech, of course, the time frames are a little longer than in typical two people's doing software in their garage. Um, in the the one thing I love about aging and longevity biotech specifically is that the idea of the geroscience hypothesis, the idea that these aging pathways really hit multiple age-related diseases means that even though you have to pick a single indication to go through regulatory on, um, so your, your chance of success in that initial clinical trial is still the same small percentage chance times pot of gold. But if you succeed and get on the market, it's highly likely that your pathway that you hit or whatever mechanism you're doing will impact other diseases. So actually, the pot of gold is multiple pots of gold. So I actually think it's going to be very lucrative. Um, but of course, you know, and everybody picks some indication. So it's not 50 years, it's not even 10 years, right? People will see returns after a while. And, and, and as an angel investor, I get to have longer time frames than some of the VCs who have to satisfy LPs. But you know, usually a lot of these things can get acquired at phase two. So it's not like you're waiting the full 10 years of the FDA clinical trials. And in many cases, orphan diseases or things can go through clinical trials faster. Uh, one more here. Um, so, Carl, do you only list companies that call themselves longevity companies? So, Cause... let me. Uh, you know, I won't. I won't try to throw it up here. But um, uh, it. The original criteria was essentially. So, first of all, the the about page of the website. If you go to agingbiotech.info/about, the criteria as it was when I launched the site just o almost five years ago is still up there. The basic judge criteria is. It hits a core pa aging pathway, like a hallmark or a SENS area, um, or it clearly hits something that underlies multiple age-related diseases. If the company is transparent enough about what mechanisms of action it is hitting, or it has a stated goal of 
of doing being aging longevity rejuvenation. So it, you know, if you're just in stealth and you're just launched and all you've done is put up a page, but you say I'm a I'm going to solve aging, then I include it. But of course, there's not much info, so there's not much there. In my giant, so I'm currently giantly overhauling the aging companies table, and I'm going to include that same column. There's a column: is it aging? And I also include companies that are doing only neurodegenerative aging, um, as as only brain, because um, there's a lot of those. Uh, there's going to be four new columns that give you f- the user finer grained ability to sort and restrict different ways to judge whether a company is aging or not. One's going to be, does the company have an aging and longevity mission explicitly? And some do and some don't. And another one's going to be, does it hit a core aging pathway? Another one's going to be, does it have multiple age-related diseases it hits? And the last one's going to be, do the people in the company come to core aging conferences. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, to follow up, how many companies that are doing the right type of science but wouldn't call themselves longevity company, how many companies are there like this? I don't have the exact counts, but there are a lot of companies who are actually in late stage clinical trials, already in phase three trials, who aren't primarily, don't primarily call themselves longevity companies, but are clearly hitting longevity pathways. So there's a couple regener- you know, companies that came out of the sort of regenerative medicine community, stem cell companies um, that fall into that category, you know, because that field, that community has existed for 20 years or, you know, it's sort of older than the aging community. Um, and then there's a couple other ones, you know, people, you know, there's some mitochondria companies and some other companies that hit core pathways, but they don't primarily call themselves aging companies. Thank you so much, Carl. Much more to discuss. I also shared your slides in the WhatsApp. Thank you.